Hi, hello, how's it going? Oh my god, I'm so tired and my hair needs a wash. Fully aware of that. But all I feel like doing today is reading. It's a Sunday, a rather lazy Sunday. I woke up pretty much normal time and I just lay in bed and edited another video which is on my other channel so i'll put a screenshot of it here and um yeah and it's basically um a brief <laughs> a brief insight into um cornelius at the national theater it's still on so if you want to go and get tickets go to the national theater's website um it's playing until the 9th of november i believe um but anyway, this is about books. This is my book channel. So I have been reading Anne Cleve's, what's it called? The, I want to say Heron's Cry. Yes, Anne Cleve's The Heron's Cry. I'm about 28% in it now, still going. It's jumping back and forth into so many people's perspectives. It's actually getting annoying. So there's three detectives and sergeants and whatever. Um, within the police force uh, investigating this murder. And even if it's just those three perspectives, it would be a heck of a lot better. Because it's not just their perspectives. It's like the entire community's perspectives. You've got the artistic community. You've got um, the NHS community. You've got uh, the victim's neighbours community. You've got... Uh, even even the detectives' families are involved as well with their own chapters, and I'm like, what the heck? So it's just really confusing. Um, but I will say that is the so far that is the only thing that I have found wrong with it because it is just so gripping, and I want to know what the hell is going on in here. So as much as I'm enjoying that, the dual perspectives are really annoying. Because the recent chapter that I just read is, um, previous chapter that I just read was from Matthew. Uh, I think he's a police detective, I believe. He could be a detective sergeant, I can't remember. But um, he's the boss of Jen. And suddenly, I've just finished that chapter and then the new chapter is Jen's chapter. So we're going back to Jen's perspective now. And I'm just like, what the flip is going on here? So I'm going to start one of my library books. I've got a massive library book haul, which I need to start. Um, was meant to start this yesterday on the train, but I didn't. I'm going to start at last the Bromance Book Club. This is the first book from what I understand in the, what's the series called? The, um, I think it's called the Romance Book Club series. I saw this on... My God, whose blog did I see this on? Um, if I can remember the creator, I'll put a screenshot into her channel. Go and check her channel out. Um, and she really enjoyed it. It's just like a rom-com um, novel romance kind of thing and i just thought to myself i haven't actually watched any movies read anything to do with rom-coms in so long so i thought why not i'll give it a try and see how it goes so i'll read that and i've also still got vampire night manga series to start so who knows i may jump in that just for a little break as well so i've got a smoothie i've got a coffee let's read wear your sweater vintage red Calculator in my head. Figure you out, math quiz. I fail it. Oh, another late one. Oh, God. Um, it's almost half past ten, but I haven't read much of this. I've what chapter am I on? I don't even know what chapter I'm on. I'm so tired. Um, I believe I'm approaching chapter four, um, and they've just kind of like entered like the men's book club and 
It's basically saying, hey, book club is more than just books. It's about common ground. So it's basically saying book club is basically therapy. What the? Books are therapy, which is an interesting concept. Please excuse the plaster. This is the way I can only breathe through my nose when I'm sleeping at the moment. Um, but anyway, I haven't basically read any of the books that I said that I was going to start with today, but I did finish a book and I have started this book back in mid-May. So I've been trying to read this book for some time, um, but I finished it today and it's Waking Olivia and a real surprise because it took me a long time to get into this book and I started to really dislike Will, Coach Will, shall I say, and it was just really slow. It, it, events were happening, but not too much on the romance front. And we're like, okay, she sleep runs, but come on, we want to um, get to know her, get, like, start breaking her barriers down a little bit. And I don't think that happened until, like, maybe a third or even a quarter of the way in. So it's a real slow burner, but I will say it's a very good slow burner. Waking Olivia by Elizabeth O'Rourke. Um... And I rated it the same rating as I rated Undertow, which I still think Undertow is my favourite from um, Elizabeth O'Rourke. But Waking Olivia was such a surprise. Um, I didn't expect to enjoy it as much after getting over the slow beginning and slow burn. It's a real slow burn. Um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. So that one I have finished. I've got a bit of a headache, so I'm probably not going to read anything tonight. I'm just going to get to sleep and get up in reasonable time and see what happens, see what I can read tomorrow, I think. So I will update you tomorrow at some point. Hi, back again. Um, Shameless plug, I also edited another video, still on the same channel that I'm doing this for, um, specifically about my thoughts on Waking Olivia, I will put a screenshot in here, but yeah, shameless plug, go and find it on my channel, it's um, on my channel, available now, so go and watch it. I don't even know what to say, because I had a health assessment appointment tomorrow and then we got a second letter saying we can't give you an appointment until further notice your appointment has been postponed now i've just received a call from somebody saying can you still attend your appointment tomorrow at nine o'clock in southampton which is 45 minutes away from me and i don't drive so i have to rely on somebody else to either take me well, I have to take at least two buses and a train to get to it. And I'm just like, and I said this in um, a WhatsApp message to a family member. I was like, it's like in romance books where all they need to do is communicate. And I'm recovering from a migraine. This is the last one I need. Hand in my hand, but you push when I'm pulling. You said you love me, you'll only believe it. If you stay right here, you've got your secrets and I.
Okay, um, it's incredibly windy outside. It is now Saturday, and this weekly vlog is now almost over. And I've only read two books in, excuse me, in this vlog. Um, I finished uh, The Heron's Cry by Anne Cleves. Not my favourite of hers. Um, it was jumping far too much from different perspectives throughout the chapters. And I just wish there were more cookie crumbs of clues um, to who the um, uh, actual murderer was. Because when the big reveal happened, I thought, huh? Wow. So, okay, maybe I missed them. Maybe it's me. Maybe I missed them. I don't know. But this hasn't put me off Anne Cleves. I want to read more from her. Um, it was written very well. Um, the pacing was great. It kept moving. I fell in love with some of the characters, um, particularly with Matthew and Jane. Jen? Jen. Matthew and Jen that I uh, connected to mainly. Um, so I gave it three stars in the end, which is not that high, to be honest. Um, it's okay. And I hate to put a damper on things, but I've literally just finished the Bromance Book Club. And again, it's another three star. Um, there were moments in here which I loved, so the fact that they're going through different perspectives, they're trying to find themselves, they're trying to work out what has actually gone wrong in their marriage, what has happened, and what they actually need to do to build that trust back up, um, which is a really interesting concept, and they do it through a book club, which is, <laughs> which is ironic, um, but yeah, what I I hate this. Towards the end, there was like chapter upon chapter of smart. And hey, if you like that sort of thing, pick it up. You're gonna love it. But it, um, it just made it awkward. I don't need at least two or three chapters of smart. Sorry, didn't sign up for that. But I love their twins. Their twins were written so well and they just came out. I could visualise them so vividly and they were so cute in my head. Um, and yeah, you could say that I'm biased because one of them is called Amelia. Ava and Amelia, so the two A's there. Um, and I loved how... Fear was with her sister Liv. Liv really irritated me. Now I can understand why, because there's um, trauma from their parents, and that's that was actually revealed quite well, actually, with um, when Fear had a conversation before her dad got married to his fourth wife, I believe. So I mean, each to their own. Um, but there was a lot of things that Fear needs to say to her dad. Let's just say that. Um, yeah, so, again, very well written, very good pacing book, and moved very quickly, and this is almost, is it almost 400 pages? No, it's, I think it's just over 300 pages, but, yeah, it moved really quickly. So, again, another three star, two three stars, bleh, so, <laughs> Bit of a downer, I must say. But um, the other day, I've gotten that far. I'm just over halfway of um, the long game. Now, I this is meant to be classed as a sports romance. And I can see why. But people could probably be put off for, not, for there not being enough of a sports, of a traditional sports action going on here. I don't mind that so much. I, I pretty like that. Particularly with, what's his name, is it Cameron? Yes, Cameron, I love Cameron. He's clearly gone um, to North Carolina for mental health reasons. He clearly has similar mental health reasons to Adeline? Adeline? I think that's how you pronounce her name. Similar mental health uh, issues to Adeline. And I think eventually that is how they... Uh, bond shall we say um they both need to coach this um girl's 
is it under 10s under 10s children's children's soccer team basically um and i love how cameron is with his two cats i love how one of them's like perfect and listens and obeys and is just the perfect cat and is always cute and curls up on the sofa and then you've got willow who just wants to make a mess tip a food bowl upside down um run away from the house and chase chickens and the rooster every day and every morning so i love that <laughs> um yeah so i'm enjoying it perhaps not for the right reasons but i'm surprisingly enjoying it which i didn't expect to i'm gonna be honest so i think i've also got the audiobook for this i read the large majority of it on audio um yesterday while i was, was doing some work um so either i will read this tonight or i will i'm about to go for a walk so i might listen to this um as i'm on my walk um as well but i'm also going to pick up another one it's it's a really short one by the way um and this is a throwback from my childhood um a fortune cookie the chocolate box boy by kathy cassidy i hope i'm pronouncing that right now this is the final book in the chocolate box girls series but obviously they've crossed it out and done it to boy i believe this is the boyfriend of cherry i could be wrong though basically i'm going into this blind it's basically from one of the guys perspectives as opposed to one of the girls so that's really good and i've just found out that she's kind of written another series similar to this as well um i think it's called the chocolate box secrets um which i may want to read so um I'm, I'm, i may try that um in the future but I think this is going to be one of the last books that I read in this vlog because tomorrow is Sunday and I want to finish the um, this weekly vlog on the Sunday because I started it on Sunday from a week. Um, I wish I could could have put in more updates. Um, I had a health assessment, a two um, a forty eight hour migraine, and a whole load of um, stuff really going on. Um, but hopefully I can finish the long game in this vlog and fortune cookie then that way I would have read four books in this weekly vlog which I think is pretty darn good so I'm also got on the go got on the go Jesus let me speak um, flawless finally by Elsie Silver this has been in my bookshelf for ages but again I've read quite a bit yesterday so got a bit of that and this is weird um again another one who's been on my bookshelf for ever and a day i think this came in a book box um it's vanished by i'm not even going to try and pronounce the author's name you can read it for yourself there because dyslexia can't read it this is a fantastic premise i must say but it's written so oddly which is why I haven't read much of it physically, I must say. Um, and the um, case seems very complex because there's murder, there's um, a drug operation going on. And according to the blurb, there's a potential um, art thief. What's it called? It's not an... Excuse me. It's not an art thief. It's like an art theft um operation going on as well which i haven't got to that bit yet um so we'll see i'm it's good um we are following maggie and jack war and they've got a little daughter called hannah who's clearly a young a young toddler and um i believe maggie is a nurse or a carer or something and Jack is a police officer. So clearly they're both working long hours. So Jack's mum, Penny, comes in and obviously takes care of Hannah uh, when the two of them are working long hours. So this is actually the second book in a, um, a series. I forget what the series is actually called. But um, 
this is this is weird because it starts off with a 72 year old woman um feeling she's being stalked by a former lodger this former lodger has clearly been involved with shady things as well as his girlfriend who ends up being found on the property as well and now i'm up to a point where we've discovered that there's clearly multiple um people involved with the 72 year old's murder there's a video footage to prove that um and that's pretty much all i know about it so far um jack and maggie are due to get married so there's that kind of anticipation of planning a wedding when also having this massive case on at the same time so i mean i dread to think how that feels on the family dynamic my god but the audiobook's actually pretty good but i just think i mean can you space out the words on the page i don't know if you can see that and a minute give me a minute can you space out the words on the page can you not do this can you not do this to readers, please? There's just words, 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 words. I might be able to show that better in the next clip. But, yeah, audiobook's great. Get the audiobook, don't read it physically, in my opinion. But, um, yeah, so who knows? Maybe I'll finish at least one of them by the end of this vlog, but I have no idea. My aim is to finish the long game and... Um, cookie fortune. By the way, the long game, I'm not even going to, again... Author names, dyslexia, there. So, what I'm the author of the long game is the same author as the I want to say the Spanish love deception. I hope I've got that right, um, which I didn't expect. So, I am going to start reading this, and then I'm going to go for a walk, and then who knows when I'm going to pick up. So I. We'll probably update you tomorrow, in all honesty, um, in this final wrap-up of this vlog, because it's been going on for ages. So, peace. I was just saying it was two days since this reading weekly vlog should have ended and i don't know if you can hear but it's now chucking it down with rain so famous last words from that last clip i didn't actually finish cookie fortune in fact i'm still reading it it's just dragging um and that could be the reason why i'm reading it now as an adult i'm not a child anymore so could be the reason why it could be that maybe the publishers just wanted to finish the series off with another book it's not cherry's boyfriend it's a mystery half brother which is even more bizarre i don't remember from honey's book honey is the oldest sister of the uh I want to say Tanglewood sisters, but I think that's wrong. Um, and she's the one who's a bit of a wild child, always has, always will, since her parents divorced. And then when Cherry and her father arrive in Somerset, everything just kind of goes a little bit of a disaster, really. So much so that she lives with her dad in Australia for a bit. And apparently that's when she finds out about Jake Cook, um, who's her half-brother. Because it turns out that her dad has had an affair while he was still with her mum. And the result of that is obviously Jake. So, Jake, Jake has had a hard life. Um, he's only 14 and he's very similar to Honey which is probably why it makes sense that they bond very quickly and he ends up in Somerset because he's got nowhere else to go um, and that's basically where I'm up to right now yeah 
so basically let's wrap this up um i am so tired i am so sorry so basically in this weekly reading vlog i read waking olivia by elizabeth o'rourke i gave that four stars that was a complete surprise i didn't expect to enjoy that as much as i did then i read the bromance book club by lisa k adams i gave that three stars it was good not great um then I read Anne Cleves, The Heron's Cry. Again, three stars. It's not my favourite of Anne Cleves. I think if I'm going to be honest, I think I enjoyed that more than uh, The Bromance Book Club. Uh, but, but I think that's the first book in the series, actually. Um, but I think the best book that I read in this um, uh, reading vlog has got to be the long game again another complete surprise i i can relate to this book i'm using my voice i really enjoyed this book another complete surprise i didn't expect to enjoy that book as much as i did um and it is the um same author as the spanish love deception and i have that on audio from the library so i could be reading that in another vlog who knows but right now i'm here to close this up Thank you so much for bearing with me with this vlog. It's a bit of a mess and a bit of a jumble. But thank you so much. It is now the 8th of October. So this vlog should have ended on the 6th. But never mind. It's just the way life goes. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog. Be sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. And share this video. See you later.